Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Shafiq Poonja. I'm a previous uh, co-founder and currently the chief of staff at Mendel. I'm delighted to be able to present uh, Mendel. We're founded in 2018. We currently have 50 full-time employees. We're based in San Jose, California, with a satellite office in Cairo, Egypt. We're backed by DCM, which is a blue chip VC based in the Silicon Valley with over four billion in capital, uh, focused on oncology. And we're recently fe featured by Deloitte as one of the six unique case studies for AI powered research. Um, our team, our two co-founders is Dr. Kareem Galil with an MD and Dr. Wael Saloum with over 15 years of AI experience, was previously funded by DARPA multiple times, has 15 years of AI experience in the healthcare domain, and my esteemed um, fellow colleagues. Sir so, Shafiq, I have to interrupt. I think you're not putting it on the slideshow so we can also do the presentation on the slideshow. Just make sure that you put the slideshow screen to be shared not the presentation itself. Sure, um, are you able to see that now? Uh, no, we see the presentation, the slides, but we don't see the slideshow. So maybe with your, with your cursor, try to click on uh, the slideshow button or F5, or make sure that you are sharing the slideshow screen. Sure, give me just yeah. one second. Sorry yeah, sure, that's okay. Okay, uh, any better? I'm waiting. Yes, no, it works. Okay, great, sorry about that. So, no, it's okay, it's fine. Today's options for, uh, for data are currently in the medical space um, very primitive. So on one side, you have structured data, which oftentimes um, is very superficial, where it does not capture certain important and extremely rele relevant information. For example, things like staging of cancer and being able to look at things like PDFs and scanned documents are often missed when looking solely at structured data. Other options for being able to look through data are normally involving that human abstraction or human curation of data. This is extremely slow, expensive, and very difficult to scale. For example, it takes about a million dollars and 27,000 man hours to be able to curate about 50,000 patients. The last option is AI with very low clinical validity. And this requires heavy corrections by humans and experts to a point where human creation is oftentimes seen as actually a better option. Um, what we've done is being able to organize how to be able to structure unstructured data. In the sample here, you can see how the different notes, all of the different doctor's notes, lab notes, pathology reports, scan documents, we've developed products to be able to understand how this unstructured data can be organized and also being able to be developed into a knowledge representation. We've developed some products called Retina, Redact, and Read that I'll discuss in a second. For starters, Retina is our proprietary OCR that we've developed. Right now, about 60% of patient data is trapped in these scanned records for things like faxes, printed reports, and oftentimes these, this data is not resurfaced being able to be used for medical and clinical decisions. Mendel has developed a best-in-class tool for OCR of this medical data. Off-the-shelf solutions in some of the state-of-the-art, including Google, fail to recognize at least one word in every four words, even when trained specifically on medical data. In addition, we've developed Redact, which is a proprietary de-identification tool. Mendel, as we know it, is the only company currently in the world that has AI technology capable of passing the HIPAA accuracy threshold, which is a 99% precision. It's able to redact PHI even in the middle of the text without compromising the richness of the document. As seen here, you can be able to see that it understands the inference and the entailment being able to be associated and the AI's models of being able to understand what's kind of going into the medical literature and not simply just machine readable. What we've done is been able to create a tool that after we've OCR'd and de-identified the data, we've created a search engine. However, the search engine is not your typical Google kind of keyword search. This is a semantic search capable of understanding what is being asked of it. 
This leads to analytics-ready data, which can be tracked and verified to the source documents. So when you put a search and certain patients are populated, you can see exactly and for what evidence and what reasons that was being decided. This kind of leads to the last and the marquee product, which is called Clues. Typically, being able to aggregate all of the data and being able to use it into an analytics-ready data set takes about six months, and you can't really change the endpoints. With what we've been able to do, we've been able to develop an understanding which we can do in a matter of minutes and be able to change those endpoints for regulatory submissions. If you see this graph, what would take 27,000 hours, we're able to do in a matter of 15 minutes. What was taking hundreds of thousands of dollars, we're able to do for a few cents, providing a 360 degree view of the longitudinal journey of the patient. You can see here for a visual depiction of how our medical text recognition is vastly superior. Um, this is compared to Google, which right now is considered one of the state of the art on the market, and how much more words and text that we pick up, which allows for our knowledge representation and the ability to understand this on a larger scale for each record for each patient over millions and billions of different records. Deloitte recently featured us in a case study as mentioned. And uh, Shafiq, you need to wrap up because time's up. But our uh, current yeah, yeah. Is we're integrated at a number of different hospitals, and we've recently repurposed our technology outside of oncology, especially given the recent kind of COVID outbreaks. And I'm happy to be able to answer and take more questions. Thank you very much for this. And uh, any questions from our judges, mentors? We have Aaron, please go ahead, followed by Gary. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, good uh, presentation, Shafiq. Uh, I have a few questions. I don't think you got into the revenue model. Uh, I guess it was, uh, so I'd like to understand what your uh, revenue model is. And also, the other thing I was not clear about is, I know that you're digitizing all of the paper records and all of that, but uh, are you doing uh, anything in terms of, I, I suppose you are doing predictive analytics on top of that, or are you just a search engine, uh, which allows clinicians to query the data? Uh, are you doing actual, uh, and are you looking at other areas besides oncology? Sure, great question, um, and really apologize for any of the glitches. So first, in terms of our revenue model, we just started generating revenue in 2019. We facilitate and see ourselves as sort of an ingredient basis uh, business. So depending on who our end user is, we're working with pharma, we're working with real world data and real world evidence companies, along with individuals that just need to be able to tap into their structured and their uh, OCR and their de-identification capabilities. So we have different models, primarily B2B at the moment, um, but depending on the end user and how much data, we can be able to kind of plug in to a specific aspect or take over the entire workflow. Um, in regards to, you know, the predictive analytics part, HEOR, Health Economics and Outcome-Based Research, we've been able to move from retrospective decision-making, seeing how things work in the past, and stitching together not just 100 patients, but thousands and tens of thousands to start being able to form things like in silico trials and running virtual trials, looking at more prospective decision-making especially in the act of COVID, by being able to look through this, as you're testing hypotheses and seeing things come through the market, you're having a great way to be able to run a double blind or sometimes a blind study, being able to kind of test these things out in a virtual setting before being exposed to that in a practical situation. Just a quick follow-up. Are you doing only text or are you also doing images? Because I saw it was only text. Absolutely images. So part of you know, trying to be able to get data is extremely noisy from tables. There's some challenges in there, but our goal is to surface virtually everything coming from both structured and unstructured, being able to make that semantically queryable and then extracting those endpoints specifically and providing source document verification. Right, thank you. Okay, um, can you tell us a bit more about your IP? And in particular, I guess you said that Google is your big competitor because you're 4x better. So how do you defend yourself against Google? Um, and why would they do this? So we're patent pending with two proprietary patents. I mentioned that my, uh, my co-founder, Wael Saloum, he was funded by DARPA. He's been doing this for about 15 years. Um, in terms of our kind of, um, the way that we've approached this is that we try to use off the shelf solutions for a lot of our IP. We've integrated with about 15 oncology clinics. And we started with oncology because it's the absolute most complex. 
And that's how we're now able to repurpose this tech. Uh, we've had to build our own OCR. We've had to build our own de-identification. And the reason for our de-identification is we got this third party validated, which meets and exceeds the, th the HIPAA threshold. So that allows the hospital to share this de-identified information with us because they know that it exceeds kind of the threshold. Uh, HIPAA is extremely important. Google's kind of OCR and their off-the-shelf solutions don't meet these thresholds. And that's why we kind of had to refine and build it ourselves and also build our own ontology, which incorporates millions and millions of records that our algorithms and AI models have trained on. Maja, would you like to go ahead with one quick question, I think? Sure, one? just one yeah. quick question. Thank you for your presentation. Could you please explain how do you contribute to the SDGs? Absolutely. Um, so in the last slide, I put that number 17, essentially the ability for partnerships. Democratizing AI, as you talk about biases, and I really liked your intro, it's extremely important to be able to start off at a baseline that there's an inherent bias based upon different physicians across the world. My co-founder and CEO, Dr. Kareem Galil, he started Mendel with the mission of being able to make basically a Jarvis for medicine. And in terms of the kind of initiatives for the UN, this ability to take different data sources, right now it's extremely biased. And this ability to be able to look from retrospective, as we look prospective, you can be able to narrow down this data, geographical specific cities to different countries and be able to kind of make the best decisions. And also we have a team of kind of clinical oncologists that are manually curating and looking through this data to be able to spot any of these blinders, uh, providing for further substantiation. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Joseph, do you have a quick one or? Yeah, just real quick and I, I apologize here. Uh, nice yeah, presentation. Um, uh, as I was going through, as, as you were going through your presentation, I noticed you've got a ton of capability, a lot of product offerings. So one of the things you wanna be careful is not to scatter yourself so thin to where you start to lose focus on the things that you're really good at, right? Sure. But, I, I, um, but I'm curious, um, you know, uh, what, what, what do you see your target targeted kind of audience. It sounds like or your customer, it sounds like you, you guys just started to, hopefully, it sounds like you just started getting some revenue. So you've got pharma, you've got, you got R&D departments in each of those pharmaceutical companies, you've got clean labs, you've got like companies like IMS, you've got data analytics, you've got lots of different players there. Where do you plan on focusing to ensure, because any, any one of those groups I just mentioned could be a, a tremendous benefit of your company. Sure, so Joseph, I, I really appreciate the ability to, you know, caution against going five directions versus going specifically in one. And we've been yeah. in stealth mode for the last 18 months. The reason we kind of avoided the full commercialization is really understanding our product and our capabilities. So I, I kind of, I, I demoed a couple and kind of discussed, we do have some other product offerings, but the most important is in a post COVID universe, um, basically large data trials and the ability to query this data uh, pharma is not selling because they don't have salespeople going to hospitals, right? And for um, health economics, oftentimes you need to be able to demonstrate validity. So for us, the ability to tap into unstructured data is everything. With our OCR and our de-identification technology, if you miss one of every four, four words, your entire process is broken when you're looking through only structured data. And oftentimes there's other competitors in the space that are doing this, but without AI. So if you change cancer or you change the definition of staging, you can't manually retrospectively abstract that. So there has to be a more sustainable and scalable solution. And we're basically um, at the helm, if you think of a company like Flatiron acquired by Roche, we can do this with AI for a fraction of the speed and time with much more substantiated results.